Hi, this is Dallas of Algorithms. We're doing homeworks for chapter 22, which is about breadth-first search, depth-first search. It's about the beginning of graph graphing algorithms. Um, we're going to do 22.1, these, these. I'm not going to do this one. Okay, it's a depth-first search. It takes a long time. I'm going to give you the answers to this one, but I'm not going to work it out. And this one, I never gave you a thing. It's topological sort. I said you have to. You're responsible for the material, but th there was no good question to ask. So we'll mostly concentrate on one and two. Okay. So let's read one. Given a adjacency list representation, so this is number 22.1, number one. Given an adjacency list representation of a directed graph, how long does it take to compute the out degree of every vertex? I'm sorry, given an adjacency list of representation of a directed graph, how long does it take to compute the out degree of each vertex? How long does it take to compute the in degree? Okay, and the idea is as follows. You have an array of pointers And each pointer tells you who it's connected to. Okay, so one is connected to four, and one is connected to seven, and one is connected to twelve, and two is connected to four, and two is connected to thirteen, and two is connected to three. Okay, and we'll put nil over there, and we'll put nil over there, and 3 is connected to, let's say, 4, and 3 is also connected to number 7, and 3 is also connected to number, I don't know, 5 and nil, such. Okay, so that's an adjacency list. Now let's go through the question. Give an adjacency rep. How long does it take to compute the out degree of each vertex? Okay, so out degree is fairly simple if you want to do one of them. So let's say you want to count how many out degrees. How many things does this do? So what you have to do is you have to traverse the list. And you say, oh, there's one, two, three. There are three guys coming out of here. Okay, how many are there coming out of here? Oh, there's one, two, three. Okay, how many are coming out of here? This one, two, three. Okay, so this is pretty stupid. Um, and let's say four is connected to one, and four is connected to 13, and then nil. So there's two guys coming out of that. Okay, so t for each one, you have to just go through that list. Now, what's the worst possible scenario? Okay, the worst possible scenario is you have a graph like this with one vertex here, we'll call it 17, and he's connected to every single other vertex. Okay, so he's connected to every single other vertex. So in that case, to calculate the out degree for 17, you basically, it's going to be, you're going to have the order of the number of edges. Okay, that's the worst case to calculate one of them. To calculate all of them, no problem. Okay, so what do you do to calculate all of them? You set up an array of counters. Okay, so we'll call it an array of counters. They all start off as zero. Okay, and you basically have to go through the entire thing and traverse each link till you get to nil, keep it on going, and each time you get to something, you say, whatever, um, one has three, two has three, three has three, four has two, and you keep on doing that counter. This is all for out, for out degree. How about in, in degree? Well, there it's a little bit more complicated. Okay, here it's a little bit more complicated in degree. Again, you have to set up an array of counters, Oh, I'm sorry, but in this case also, basically, every single link corresponds to an edge, okay? And so, this algorithm that calculates everything is O of E. How many edges you have, that's how many things. That's how you're going to have to do it. 
Okay, great. How about an out degree? It's the same thing. It's the same O of H. You have to go through everything. But here, when you get to 4, you don't increment the 1 counter. You say, oh, look, by by, by out degree, you say, oh, let's increment the one counter. One plus one plus one, three. Okay, here, you go over here, you say, oh, let's increment the four counter. Because you're talking about the in degree. You're talking about how many things come into a vertex. So, here you're going to increment the four counter. Here you're going to increment the seven counter. Here you're going to increment the twelve counter. Here you're going to increment the four counter again. Here you're going to increment the thirteen counter. And again, you do that with each one of these counters, and the answer is O of E. Okay, because you basically have to go through every single one of them. So this is showing you simply how to deal with this list representation of a directed graph. Okay, it takes care of that. Okay, next, question number two. Given adjacency list representation for a complete binary tree of seven vertices. Okay. Okay, let's read that again. Given adjacency list representation for a complete graph of binary, uh, binary tree and seven vertices. Give an equivalent adjacency matrix, so they want both, adjacency list and adjacency matrix. Um, representation, assume the vertices are numbered from 1 to 7 as in a binary tree. So it looks like this. 1, I'm sorry, as in a binary heap. 3, I assume it means this and not... Um, taking into account the order, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? And so, let's do it. Again, we're going to have an array of 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? 1 is connected to 2, and to 3, and then it goes to nil. 2 is connected to 4 and 5, and then to nil. 3 is connected to 6 and 7, and then it's connected to nil. And all the rest, 4, 5, 6, and 7, have no children. We have 4, 5, 6, so it's all nil. Okay, so that's an adjacency list. Adjacency matrix is way simpler. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so let's do this. 1 is connected to 2 and 3. 2 is connected to 4 and 5. 3 is connected to 6 and 7. And all the rest are zeros. Oh, I'm assuming these are directed. So, so it's not symmetry. And all these are zeros. Okay, so that takes care of that. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Next. The transpose of a directed graph is the graph GT. Okay, so we have a graph G, which is equal to vertices and edges. Okay, then we make a graph GT, 
which is the same vertices, but the edges are flipped. That means in G, you have, let's say, from vertex A to vertex B. Then in GT, you will have from vertex A to vertex B, but you'll have it going the opposite direction. Okay, so that's what it is. Thus, GT is G with all the edges reversed. Describe an efficient algorithm for computing GT from G for both adjacency list and adjacency matrix representations of Gs. Analyze the running times of your algorithms. Okay, so let's do this. Not hard. The easiest one is matrices. Okay, and it goes as follows. Um, Set up a new n by n matrix called G prime for i equal one two n for j equal one two n G prime of i comma j fill in all the points is equal to very simple G of j comma i. Let's see what this says. This says if there's a map, if there's a one, if there's a one in this position, these are binary matrices. There is zero or one. There is an edge or is there edge. So in G prime, there is an edge from i to j, if and only if there's in G an edge from j to i. That's it. So you have to go through all n squared, okay, where um, the number of vertices is equal to n, you have to go through all n squared of these things, of the g, fill in of the g prime and the g, they're both n by n matrices, and you have to fill it in. So if there, if this is a zero, then this will be a zero. If this is a one, then this will be a one. Let's say it again. If this is a zero, that means there's no edge from j to i, then when you flip it, there'll be no edge from i to j. If there is an edge from j to i, then there'll be an edge from i to j. Okay, it gets simpler than this. So this is n squared. It's theta of n squared. It's not less than n squared. It's n squared. Okay, great. That's how you do it for, for adjacency matrices. How about for adjacency lists? But for adjacency lists, well, basically what you do is as follows. I should have not erased it, okay. We don't have that much room. One, two, three, four, dot, 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 n, okay. And so let's say this is five, and he's also related to seven, and he's also related to three, and nil, okay. And He's related to 14, and he's also related to 8, and he's also related to 12, and he's also related to 7, and then nil. Okay, and he's related to 2 and 16. Oops. And nil. He's related to, okay, we had enough of this. Okay, basically, so this is the graph G. So what do you do for G prime? Well, you make a new adjacency list. No good, no good, hold on. Not closed properly. You make a new adjacency list, okay? Okay, and it's also gonna have N vertices. I'm sorry, n elements in your list. It's going to be a list of n things, okay? And what you do is, you go through G, and every time you see 5, so you go to list 5, and you put in 1. So let's go through this. In G, you have, this says there's an edge from 1 to 5. In G prime, that will be an edge from 5 to 1, okay? And then you'll go to here, 
and this says that in position 7 there's an edge from 7 to 1. And then for position 3 there'll be there is in G from 1 to 3 and in G prime they'll be from 3 to 1. Okay, And so you go through the entire thing. Now this is not n squared because the list you only go through what, what exists but this is order of the number of edges. You basically have to go through this thing and every time there's an edge you put it in its opposite place. Okay, so that takes that takes care of that. So that's order of edge. Again, for the for the other thing, it's order of vertices squared. Okay, that's for the adjacency matrix. That's for the adjacency um, list. Okay, but obviously the matrix is a little bit easier. It's a three-line program. Here you have to go through. Uh, a for loop and each one of them traverses all the lists. Okay, so it's slightly more complicated but not hard at all. Okay, good. Now let's do section 22.2. We're going to do two problems, a basically breadth first search. I'm not going to do the problems, rather I'm just going to put the answers up right here. Okay, and basically they're asking you to find the discovery time and the final time. Um, the discovery time and the final time for each one of them. Hold on. I'm sorry. The discovery time and the fa and the and the and the and the parent. Okay, so let's just erase this and put up the answer. Okay, this is the answer for 22-2-1 show that the discovery time and the pi values that result from running the algorithm search on the digraph using <laughs> vertex 3 as a source. You start here, the discovery time is 0, it has no parent, it is the root of the tree, and then you go here is one child, here is another child, so there's both discovery times are 1, okay, and then he doesn't go further, his parent is 3, his parent is 3, and um, you go further. This will never be reached. You go here, here, and here. These, this will never be reached because it's directed. Okay, here's an undirected graph. Hold on. It says show the d and pi values, the distance and the parent values, the result of running breadth first search on undirected graph using u as the source. So here's the source. Undirected means it's going to go both ways. So he has three children. 1, 1, 1, discovery 1, 1, 1, all three of them, the parent is you, okay, and then you're going to go on from there. Discovery 2, discovery 3, discovery 4, discovery 5. His parent is R, his parent is S, his parent is W, his parent is T, that means he comes from here, not here, only because T comes before X in alphabet. Okay, so that takes care of section... 22.2. I want to do also the results for 22.3. Okay, so this is the answer for the section 22. Let's do it a little bit closer, maybe. You can see it. Okay, that should be good. Okay, so let's go through this. Okay, um, you start here from 1 to 16. You're going to do this whole part of the tree, um, 2 to 7, 3 to 6, and this is one part of the tree, there's another part of the tree, there's another part of the tree, okay? Here, when you run out, you're going to go through here. Again, these are starting times and finishing times. This is a crossover, so from this tree to this tree, crossover, a back, a back, and a back. Okay, so that not only tells you what the starting times and uh, the discovery and finishing times, but also what each one of the edges are. Okay, so that takes care of that. I, there's no problem assigned for section four, but you're on your own. Okay, thank you.